Welcome! Today we're gonna build a gaming PC for 600 US dollars. Let's begin with the motherboard. This is a B450 MHP from Biostar. We bought it in a local shop for about $60. Now while this motherboard might seem like it's really bare bones and it'll struggle to handle any semi-decent CPU, I've built many systems with it and I know from experience that it is actually quite capable and it'll have no problems with our CPU whatsoever. Speaking of which, we'll be installing a Ryzen 5 5500 into this motherboard. We got this CPU on eBay for $65. And I forgot to mention by the way, all of the parts besides the GPU are brand new. Whenever I get a chance to build with new parts, I always prioritize new over used. Unless the price difference is really huge, because I give my customers 1-2 to two years of warranty. So if I build systems with many used parts, the chance of failure will be a lot higher. Anyhow, we'll be cooling our CPU with a Deepcool AG400. We bought this cooler in a local shop for about 20 US dollars. By the way, if you guys are ever confused about which brackets or nuts to use for which socket, the orange ones in Deepcool products are usually for AMD. We'll be applying GD900 thermal paste on the CPU. For the case, I went with WJ Coolman DTM2. As I mentioned in my previous videos, this case is quite cheap, it's high quality, and most importantly, it is beautiful. It makes anything you build in it look premium. We bought it for $30. We'll be installing 4 of these ARGB fans in the case. The cool thing about these particular fans is that they are from the same brand as the case, and they use the same proprietary LED connector. Now, the main connector is Molex, but one of the fans usually comes with a Molex adapter, which allows LED control, and then the same fan also has an additional cable that connects to the case, after which you're able to control the lights with a button on the case, which is really cool. We bought these fans for $16. For the storage, I went with this 1TB or 960GB SATA SSD from X-Ray Disk. I think this is the last one that I bought while they were still on sale. I paid $35 for it. We'll be powering the system with this deep cool PF700 power supply. It is a bit overkill for a system like this, but I got a good deal on it so might as well use it in this system. We bought this power supply for 50 US dollars. Now I've built over a hundred computers at this point, but I've never had a scenario where I couldn't install a CPU power cable because of the clearance issue from the rear fan. But thankfully, unscrewing the rear fan wasn't too much of a hassle. For the RAM, I went with a 32GB kit from Team Group, clocked at 3200MHz. We bought it on Amazon for $46. And I know that I could have gone with something much better, but this particular motherboard likes this kit the most, meaning that we get the fastest boot times and a flawless gaming experience. And of course, the GPU. RTX 3070. The GPU prices here are quite high at the moment. RTX 3070s go for around 350 US dollars, if not more. And when I saw a listing of this GPU for 280 dollars, I grabbed my phone, gave the seller a call, and told him that I wanted it right away. He let me test it at the spot, and after a few minutes of 3 d Mark stress test, the GPU showed around 75 degrees, which is kinda high for this model. So I took it home, opened it, cleaned it, even though it was pretty clean already, and changed the thermal paste on it, which dropped the temps by 7 degrees. But because of how cramped everything is here, you might see the temps go as high as 74 degrees on the GPU. But look how cool the computer turned out to be. I'm honestly in love with these lighting effects. But in case red color is not your thing, you can always change the color on both the fans and the GPU. The fans are controlled by the button on the case, and the GPU is controlled by Firestorm, which is an application that you can download from Zotac's webpage. But anyhow, now that we are done building the computer, why don't we head over to the benchmarks and see how it performs in games. Let's begin with CS2. We are running this game on high settings at 1080p resolution. And I gotta say, the gameplay feels extremely smooth. 
Even though the computer is balanced towards AAA games, it can still achieve a pretty decent FPS in the shooters. After playing the deathmatch for about few minutes, we achieved a solid 174 FPS on average. Forza Horizon 5 Now here I was pretty certain that I wouldn't be able to run this game on the extreme settings with extreme ray tracing, but apparently this system is more than capable of running it at 80 plus FPS without any sort of upscaling at 1080p resolution. I kinda expected a few starters, considering that we only have 8 gigs of VRAM and we have everything maxed out. But I guess the game is pretty well utilized, so that won't be an issue for us today. In the end, we achieved 84 FPS in this built-in benchmark. Doom Eternal This game runs pretty well on pretty much any hardware, mainly because of how well utilized it is. So I went in with high expectations. I set the graphics on Ultra Nightmare, which is the highest settings here, and jumped straight into the battle. And I gotta say, I did not get disappointed. The game was basically flawless. The FPS stayed above 200 at all times and it even went into low 300s when there wasn't much going on in the game. On average, we achieved around 270 FPS. Hogwarts Legacy here I set the graphics on Ultra at 1080p resolution. Now I could have enabled ray tracing as well, but I chose not to do so because the game already looks and feels amazing without it. Besides, it is a really action intensive game and it just felt like I was benefiting more from the higher FPS rather than cool graphics. But don't get me wrong, ray tracing is cool and I always enable it if the hardware allows me to. But in this case, 50 to 60 FPS wasn't as enjoyable as 80 to 100 FPS without it. On average, we achieved around 87 FPS. Red Dead Redemption 2 Here I chose the highest preset and went into the built-in benchmark. At first I was kinda worried that we were gonna get less than 60 FPS, but apparently I was very wrong. The FPS stayed above 80 at all times and sometimes it even went into hundreds. On average, we achieved a solid 98 FPS. Cyberpunk will be our last game for today's benchmarks. We're running it on Psycho settings at 1080p resolution. Now here, I was expecting a bit more if I'm being completely honest, but I guess the game is a lot more demanding on the CPU than I expected, especially on the high settings. Because if we take a look at how much of our GPU and CPU is being used by the game, we'll notice that we are actually being bottlenecked by the CPU. In this case, I would normally recommend lowering the crowd density, or literally any other setting that has a big effect on the CPU usage. But I kept everything fully maxed out anyway, because I wanted to know whether or not it was actually playable. Which it was. And yes, the FPS went into 50s at times, but it honestly didn't bother me too much. While driving on the highway, we averaged around 70 FPS, but once we went into really crowded areas, that average dropped to low 60s. So depending on how high of an FPS you want in this game, you can either lower the crowd density, or you could leave it as is, it's honestly up to you. Overall, I'm really satisfied with the results. Minus the cyberpunk one, I guess. But if you enjoy playing games like Forza Horizon 5, Doom Eternal, or any other game that is not that demanding on the CPU, you'll honestly have a great time. I mean, you could have a great time in cyberpunk as well, but you would have to make a few compromises to achieve that 60 plus FPS at 1080p resolution on the highest settings. Now, if you want a game at 1440p instead, it'll be a different scenario. Of course you're gonna have a bit less FPS, but the stress will shift towards the GPU a bit more, which means that we're gonna have even less of a bottleneck on the CPU, or ideally, no bottleneck at all. I personally see this more like a 1440p gaming PC rather than 1080p. But tell me what you think, is this more of a 1080p or a 1440p gaming PC? On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.